This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector eyeball graphic using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set the view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100%. We'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button right here. Make sure you have last selected chosen from the drop down and then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. So the first thing we're going to do is create a circle. So let's come over to the Circles and Ellipses tool, and hold Control and Shift in the keyboard, and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle. We'll go back to the Select tool, and I'll just put this towards the center of the page. And I'm going to color this thing in with the shade of gray. I'm going to go with uh, maybe 30% gray. If you hover your cursor over the shade, it'll show you which percentage it is. I'm going to go with 30% gray and I'm going to come over here to the fill tab and I'm going to give this a radial gradient by clicking that button. And then I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'll click on this stop right here and just make sure the opacity of that's brought all the way up. And then I'll create another stop by clicking on this line right here, double clicking actually, double click on that line and then double click on that line again to create another stop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this center stop right here click on that and under the HSL tab I'll come over to the L column and slide that all the way to the right to make that white and then I'll click on this stop and I'll do something similar but I won't bring it all the way to the right just a little bit slightly darker than white Then we'll click on this stop right here and we'll make this one just slightly lighter that's pretty good and I'll take this stop and just slide this over to the right up to here and then I'll take this stop in the center and bring that out as well. Maybe about that much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this center stop right here. I'm just going to click and drag this up into the side a little bit. Up into the right. Just a little bit, maybe like that. And that's pretty good. We can, uh, go, we can go back to our select tool. And then we can right click this circle and go to duplicate. And we're going to turn this red. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a reflection, like a light reflection coming off the side of the eyeball. So in order to do that, I'm going to take this red circle, I'm going to bring the opacity down about in half, and then I'll hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag and scale this thing in a little bit, maybe about that much. And then I'll right click on that circle and go to Duplicate, and I'll turn that blue, and I'll hold Control and Shift and I'll scale this in maybe about that much. And then I'll right click that circle, and I'll go to Duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red circle and go to path difference. So what we did was we pretty much just punched a hole through that circle with the blue circle so we ended up with that. And then we could take this blue circle right here and I'm going to get rid of the fill color by clicking the X and I'm going to give it a blue outline by holding shift and clicking on the color blue. And Then I'll hold control and shift and I'll just scale this out until the lines going about halfway through that uh, that red ring, maybe about that much. And I'll come over to the Stroke Style tab, and the width of this, I'm going to go with um, maybe 6. Okay, yeah, 6 is pretty good. And I'll go to Path, Stroke to Path, and then hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the red ring, and go to Path, Difference. Now what I'm going to do now is create uh, a rectangle. So let's come over to the squares and rectangles uh, tool and I'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a, uh, a square like that. And I'm going to turn that blue and I'm going to get rid of the blue outline by holding shift and clicking on the on the X. And then I'll click on this uh, click on the select tool, hold shift, click on the gray circle and I'm going to align the top edges and then align the left edges so it's sitting up here in the top left corner. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what I'll do next is I'll click on this red, I mean this blue uh, square, and I'm just going to hold control and scale this up a little bit. Just a little bit, maybe, um, actually no, I'm going to bring it down. About that big, that's pretty good. And once you do that, you could hold shift and click on the red, the red rings right there and go to path, intersection. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put another um, space going through these two lines, kind of like how there is one right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab this uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'll just click and drag and create a, a long rectangle like that. And we'll go to the select tool and I want to make this the same width 
that the gap between these two red objects is, which I believe I used a six point stroke for that. So I'll click on this, this uh, blue rectangle and I'll come up to the width and I'll make that, I'll change that to six and hit enter. And then I'm gonna click on it a second time to get the rotation handles and I'm gonna hold control and rotate this around a few steps. I'm gonna grab this corner right here, holding control, one, two, three, four, uh, no, three, we'll go with three like that. And then I'll hold shift and click on these little red shapes and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis and then go to path, difference. And now we could turn that white and set the opacity to uh, maybe around 65. I'd say that looks pretty good. So what we have here is a little uh, light reflection coming off this, this eyeball right here. So let's click off of the, the graphic to deselect everything. And we'll click on this, um, this gray circle right here. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to turn that white and then hold control and shift and scale it in about that much. And then I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll come down here to the color picker and I'm going to give this a dark shade of blue, maybe that much. And I'll hold control and shift and scale this in just a little bit, just so that the, the white circle is sticking out from behind it just a little bit like that. That's pretty good. And then I'll right click this, this blue circle and go to duplicate. And I'm going to give this a lighter shade of blue, like a more uh, aqua or turquoise, something like that. And then I'll hold control and shift and scale that in a little bit. Maybe um, not too much, maybe about that much. That's pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'm going to come up, I'm going to come back to the fill tab and I'm going to give this a radial gradient. Let's go ahead and click on radial gradient. We'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'm going to click on this stop right here to the right and bring the opacity of that all the way up. And then I'll click on this stop here in the middle and I'll make this a little lighter by sliding the L column over to the right. That's pretty good. And then I'll double click this line right here to create a new stop. And I'm gonna leave that stop the color it is. And then I'm gonna click on this stop to the right over here. And I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna slide the L column over to the left a little bit. And I'll take this and move this out. Actually, no, I'll move that in. Actually, it's good right where it is. So that's pretty good right there. Um, let's come back to the select tool, click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do next is um, let's click on this blue circle. And actually, you know what? Before we do that, click off of it. Uh, let's come over to the stars and polygons tool. And we're going to create a star. And we're going to have, um, well, don't worry about these numbers just yet. We're just going to come and create a star and then we'll play with it afterwards. So we're going to hold control and shift and click and drag to create the star. Um, this is uh, only, this is actually a triangle because there's only three sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the corners and I'm just going to increase the corners of that. I'm going to give that a bunch of corners. Maybe 40, you'll see how that works. And I'm going to come back down to the color picker and I'm going to turn that red and bring the opacity down in half just so I could differentiate it and see what I'm doing. And what I'll do next is come over to the select tool and hold shift in the keyboard and click on that blue circle and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of it to deselect. Now let's click on just our red star and hold control and shift and scale this in a little bit. And you can see it's gonna be off center. Um, let me just scale it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna zoom in by uh, pressing plus on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna hold shift and click on that light blue circle. And once again, we're gonna center it on the, uh, the vertical and horizontal axis just to make sure it's centered up. And I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And then click off of it to deselect. And let's click on just this, uh, this red star right here and turn that white. And we'll keep the opacity about in half for now. I'm gonna click on this gray circle and right click it and go to duplicate. And I'll turn that black and hold control and shift and scale that down about that much. That's pretty good. And for this star, this white star, let me come back to, let me click on that and go back to the stars and polygons tool. You can use this node right here to change the, uh, the size of those, um, those little spokes in there. But make sure you hold control while you're clicking and dragging this because if you're not holding control, it's gonna be all wishy-washy like this. It's gonna be off center. So we wanna hold control to make sure it's going like that. 
And we'll come back to the uh, select tool. We'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And let me click on uh, this, this gray circle, right click that. And actually no, let's click on this blue circle down there. I'm gonna have to zoom in to grab it. I'll just press plus on the keyboard. Click on that blue circle, the light blue circle, right click it and go to duplicate. And press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give this uh, eye color a different shade. I'm gonna mix in a, a little hint of green in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, duplicated circle right here and I'm gonna turn this the shade of green we wanna use. Maybe I'll go with something like that. Or no, maybe something like that. A little lighter, maybe something a little brighter. Yeah, that's good. And I'll give that a radial gradient and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And then just hold control and just drag this line straight down, this, this center point right here. And I'll hold control and shift and grab this node and just pull this out a little bit. That's pretty good. We'll go back to the select tool. And I'm going to lower this beneath the black circle and beneath the white star. So I'm going to click the button that says lower selection one step. I'll click that once. And I'll click it again. Let's put that beneath there. And I want to duplicate that now. So let's go to edit and duplicate. Only this one, we're going to make this uh, a darker shade of blue. Maybe we'll go with something like this. And we'll give that a radial gradient as well. And press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'm going to take this node and hold control and just click and drag it up here. Maybe out of the circle, that's pretty good. And then I'll hold control and shift and grab this node and just pull that out. Just to give it a little bit of, um, a, little bit of a different... Uh, a hint to the color there. And then I'll go back to the select tool and I'm gonna lower this beneath the black circle and the white star as well, oops. So I'll just click on the button that says lower selection one step, click that once and then again, and there we have it beneath there. So let's click off of that to deselect everything. What I'm gonna do now is, um, let's click, click on this gray circle, right click it and go to duplicate. Come back down here to the color picker, we'll turn that white bring the opacity down about in half and then hold control and shift and just scale this in until it's a little smaller than the inside of that bluish greenish circle right there right about there that's pretty good and then i'll hold control and take this bottom circle of this bottom arrow and just scale that up to about there and i'll bring the opacity of this up to 100 percent and give this a linear gradient with that button Press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'm gonna take this white stop and put it up top of the circle here. And I'll take this transparent stop and bring it down to the bottom. And once I get it down here, I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard so it just goes straight down like that. And that's pretty good. We can click on the, uh, we go back to the select tool and take the opacity of this and bring this down just a little bit. We just want that to be subtle. You don't want too much of that in there. And, um, what we could do next is let's click on the gray circle, right click it and go to duplicate, turn it white, and I'm gonna hold control and shift and scale it in, make it about that small. I'm gonna put it right up here to the top right of the black circle and bring the opacity down just a little bit just so it gives the uh, appearance as a little reflection of light. And I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll put this copy over here down to the lower left but I'll hold control and shift and scale that down a little bit like that. Maybe I'll even bring the opacity up a little bit on that one. And um, let me click off of it to deselect everything. Let me see if I missed anything. No, it looks like I covered everything. Um, I just wanna click on, uh, I don't like how this um, this gray circle looks. It's not giving me enough enough uh, like perception of, um, of it being a sphere. So I'm gonna edit the colors a little bit. I'll click on that and then press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'll click on this last stop. And I think I wanna make this a little darker to help that out. Make that a little darker and click on this stop, make this a little lighter. And maybe I'll even click on this stop and I'll leave that the one, I'll leave that the way it is. Maybe I'll hold control and shift and scale this in a little bit. Maybe I'll put this over to the left like that, that's pretty good. And then we go back to the select tool. And one last final step we could do is we can right click on that gray circle and go to duplicate and turn that black and then take this arrow up here up top and just bring that down about that much and then send this to the bottom by clicking on the button that says lower selection to the bottom. 
And we could take the opacity and bring that down a little bit, maybe a little more. And I'll give this a blur, slide that to the right a little bit, just to give that a little bit of a blur. And I'll hold control and just pull this down a little bit. I'm actually gonna bring the opacity up more just to give it a little shadow to make it look like it's sitting on a surface. I'll hold control and shift and I'm just gonna make this a little smaller. And uh, that's, that's I'd say that's pretty good. Maybe I'll click and drag over the center of the eye here and select all those objects and hold control and shift and scale this out a little more. So it's a little bigger. That's pretty good. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create this eyeball graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.